Hello there, and now we are going to start the actual painting. Before we begin with that, I'm going to show you a couple of different colors here uh, for the silver. And the reason why we're going to talk about this is that you'll see paints that are called silver and they're more shiny than they need to be. You're actually looking for the color silver, not a metallic look. Uh, the difference is, is that one is a color and the other one's more like a sheen. Uh, fun historical facts, some of the uh, classic jet fighters from the 50s and stuff may look like they're just bare metal, but they're actually painted silver, and that's the look that we're going for. We're not looking to make something look like titanium or steel or aluminum or whatever. We're looking for the color silver. Now, there's a few products here. Uh, this one is <coughs> Krylon Bright Silver, so it shows a chromed cap. So this may be a contender, but we're not looking for chrome, we're looking for silver, especially after we clear coat. The other product is Krylon Shortcuts. This is a Hobbycraft enamel paint. This one is called chrome, but you can see the lid itself isn't chromed at all. It's more like a silver color. And then we have Plastic Coat Odds and Ends Fast Dry Enamel. And this one itself is also called uh, Simile Chrome. Um, this will connect with our customs for Sky Patrol later. But I want to show you uh, what these all look like. So, oh, so we have, sorry, we have one more. This is just uh, Tester's all-purpose silver. This one might be harder to find because Tester's is kind of going the way of the Dodo. They were bought by Rustoleum, but uh, if you can find some, then maybe it's worth your while. So we're going to test all of these colors and see which one we want to use for our Python Patrol. Always test your colors first before spraying, um, just to make sure it's what you want. That stuff smells really good. <laughs> that is more chromey than I'd like, so that's not bad. Let's try the shortcuts. I was like, yeah, let's use that, but it's got my other markings on it here. This is the shortcuts. Oh, I like that. So the shortcuts here, it's called chrome, but it's really not. In order for it to be chrome, it's got to have that mirror finish to it. Um, so we have a contender here in Krylon shortcuts. Chrome, but it's not chrome. So we'll put <clears throat> that one over to the maybe pile. And this one hasn't even been opened yet, so uh, this one will take a little bit of body English. So while I'm doing this, I just gotta peel off the seal. Um, this is the thing too, is if you are if you don't have a good eye for color, honestly, uh, don't be embarrassed. Uh, take your project in to a paint store and say, hey, I need to find, I'm looking for these colors. Um, and even if you have a hard time describing it, to the person, maybe if you have like a Python Patrol vehicle already, say, hey, I'm looking to replicate this. Can you help me find colors? Um, I've never had a problem with that. And uh, it's kind of their job, you know? So this is Tester's, uh, I don't know if they call this Model Master or not. Either way, it's Tester's Silver. And it's actually a little darker than the other stuff which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But I'd have to say, that's a maybe, that's a maybe. And then lastly, we'll do the Krylon, <coughs> not Chrome, whatever this is called, Bright Silver. And you may be wondering what makes it Bright Silver like this silver. Well, you have, just like you have Bright Yellow and Dark Yellow, you have the same thing for silver. Let's see what this does. Let's try this over here. That's not bad. It comes out of the can okay. 
I'm going to shake it up a little bit more and see what happens. So what we're looking for is something that's not runny um, because, you know what? I say let's do it. Okay, so we're going to go with hopefully successful Krylon uh, Bright Silver. There's the can itself. And uh, that'll be our painted choice. So now, um, if you don't have enough cardboard, let that paint dry before you set your miniature on it, your, uh, your vehicle, excuse me. Um, the other thing I've done is I've prepped this, uh, done the final preparations for painting. So I've masked off this area here. That's gonna be where the skis go. And what I've done is, in order to keep paint from getting into the cockpit, because I want to keep that the burgundy color, is I've taken paper towel and I've dampened it. Not soaked it, but dampened it. Um, and then folded it up and jammed it in there. So we don't want paint getting up in there, because then you'll just be chasing it back and forth. And you don't want to go back in there with a spray bomb once you get your pattern established on here. So we've got that all plugged up. It's only damp, so it won't affect the spray paint. Um, if you get it too wet, don't worry. Just let it sit outside, like today it's very sunny, and uh, you can tell by these hard shadows, I'm trying to do this all in the light for you. But um, just let it sit out in the sun for a bit, and it'll dry up just a little bit. And even if it becomes completely dry, it's fine, it'll actually solidify in the shape you put it in. So um, that's how we're gonna do that. So the next thing we're gonna do is decide how big our stripes are gonna be. We're a little limited. Uh, in this case because the vehicle itself is so small um, and we're using spray paint. If we were doing an airbrush, then uh, we have more choices. And yes, we could use the soft mask technique and whatnot. My preference is usually for vehicles, um, I've only done mid-size, let's call it mid-size to small vehicles. So I find black in the front, a silver stripe in the middle and black on the back works quite well. If you do something larger, I wouldn't recommend just doing the three stripes because you're going to have um, stripes that are too large and the effect is more like multiple stripes. If you look at the Conquest X30 and even their smaller vehicles, they have multiple stripes, but in this case I like just doing three. And I'm using the same uh, black camouflage paint I've used in the Tiger Force Custom and this one for painting uh, any black parts. So it's a uh, Rust-Oleum camouflage paint. It's very flat. Um, so keep in mind that the sheen from this will be different from the sheen on the silver, which is why we're going to clear coat and unify. We aim to unify the sheen of all the different colors. And we'll do a test spray. And we'll put a stripe in here. And now what I'm doing is I'm looking at the black stripe compared to the two colors. And I think that's what we want. So, without further ado, let's get down to it. So, visually I want my silver to be roughly between there and there, so I know where my black's going to stop. You don't need to worry so much about a line here because when you look at uh, Python Patrol vehicles, you'll see that some of the black or silver squares actually have both colors in them, black and silver. So it helps with the transition, so you're not so worried about having a clean line. Um, let's say, for example, this diamond would be black and then the diamond beside it would be silver. Having a little bit of mix across the two is what helps create the effect. So that's actually kind of what we're looking for. So you also want to put this on as smoothly as possible. Uh, the reason being is that because you're using hard masks, right? We talked about hard masks, so it's flush, the tape is flush against the, uh, the surface. Uh, you're going to get a hard line there, but it's you've almost like created a little miniature bowl for paint. So the smoother and lighter it goes on, the better it'll be. Because if you pull up paint too much in there, then when you take off the tape, you'll have all these raised lines everywhere and it'll look like crap. And then you'll have to do some sanding with some hobby sandpaper and your life just becomes a little bit more irritating. So we're looking for that nice application of spray paint like this. And we're not looking to force it. So if this takes us a couple of goes to do it, that's fine. So let's begin. Thank you. 
there's most of my coverage right off the bat. And you can see it's already starting to dry because this stuff is super flat. And there we go there. Now, and I like to do my black areas a little bit bigger than my silver just because um, while black is a very dominant color as we've discussed before, silver is very bright. So because there's such contrast between black and silver, um, you're almost fighting for dominance on your, on your uh, vehicle. So. Nice light bursts. And we'll leave that for now. So there we have the black applied first. So you can still see there's some maroon in there, but uh, we'll go over with a second coat. I'd rather have to do this multiple times than do it once and have so much paint in there that it, one, it pools, and two, it bleeds under the masking tape. Because um, that would just be a big bummer. So while we're there, let's freshen up our silver. And you can see here by how flat it's become that it's drying very quickly, which is nice. Making sure I grab it by a dry spot. There we go. And there you have it. So that's the basic application of color. Now you can see here, from the angle I sprayed the silver at, that uh, there is uh, maybe a little bit too much here with uh, the silver penetrating forward. So once you allow it to dry, you can go back over very lightly with the black. There you have it there. Do a little bit of a touch up on this back end here. You can see again the silver's kind of made its way down the side there. And I'm rushing this a bit. I want you to go a little bit slower than this. And there we go. So this will dry pretty quickly and I want you to let it do that. Some people will say to take the tape off right away, but I don't want you to necessarily do that. You'll have to pick for yourself. This stuff will dry pretty quickly. All the paints I've used so far are fast drying, um, and it's best not to force it, because once this is dry, we're going to see if we've missed any spots, do a couple of quick touch-up bursts, and then we'll be done. But as you can see, there's your silver and black paint applied. And like I said, it doesn't matter if the lines aren't perfectly straight, or if you have some silver and black mixing together in some of the squares, because if you look on your Python Patrol vehicles, that's exactly what happens. Um, so really, we're imitating it better than we thought we could by having that happen. Um, as you can see, I got some spray paint on my hands. Uh, pro tip is if you don't want that to happen, you have to wash your hands with uh, whatever will take off the uh, paint you're using, if it's acrylic or enamel-based, whatever. Uh, get some latex gloves. Not necessarily the dishwashing gloves, but those disposable surgical gloves that have become so popular in the past couple of years. Um, use those and then you can just take them off and throw them off and your hands are perfectly clean. Uh, me, I like getting my hands dirty a little bit sometimes, but uh, 
that's the size of it. You can see there, we have quite excellent coverage. Uh, so we're going to let this dry. I'll do some touch-up sprays, and then we'll carry on. So just hang tight, and remember, small, uh, small controlled bursts, and you want to put on as little paint as possible to get the coverage you want without having bleed under and pooling. Here it comes, the moment of truth. You should have a spray pattern that looks something like that. I chose just the black, silver, black. It's kind of my motif for most of my customs. Um, if you chose to do multiple silver lines, totally cool. Uh, that's again the difference between uh, style and technique. So now we got to take all this tape off and you may have noticed that and something you have to be careful of when you're doing maybe more than one coat is once you get paint on the tape and it dries, the tape tends to shrivel or pull away. So we just have to be cognizant of that. So before I even do this, I know there's a, if you're feeling as much anticipation as I am, then it's pretty exciting. Before we take any tape off, remember, touch-ups will be necessary. So this isn't, uh, and I know it sounded very almost negative uh, doing this whole process, but it's just to manage everybody's expectations. Um, so we're going to carry on, but you can see how the paper towel seems to have done its trick anyway and caught all the paint up here and there. Um, so let's begin. Ah, but before we do that, let's get some background music going. Uh, we'll do G.I. Joe music this time because uh, this is the exciting part. So just hang on. Okay, here we go. Very uh, tense music for the removal of tape. Now, if you can't remember where you finished, that's okay. Just find an available edge and start peeling. Very slowly. You don't want to rip this stuff off because that'll pull tape with it, or paint with it, excuse me. Right. Everyone's like, come on, just start doing the Python bits. <laughs> I get it, I get it. This will expose some edges for us. As you can make it out there, we had pretty good success in there of keeping the paint out. A uh, couple, you can see just in the back there, there's a little bit of silver in there, but we can hide that with some brushed paint. All right. Let's start with this stuff here. If you find some edges of your tape, maybe start there and see what happens. As you're doing this, it's going to... Uh, sometimes come up together like you're not going to pull off one strip at a time sometimes it'll come up in oh, oh it's so exciting um there we go good music yeah see we got some some bleed under in there and that's fine all right this is all about demystifying how this is done um and i find sometimes when i see something really amazing that i assume that they just basically you know sneeze out this stuff and it comes out perfect uh, and that's not the case. So as we work on this, I'm hoping that you're finding the same success uh, and that this series has helped uh, give you the confidence you need um, to do this. Uh, this is only one technique. You know, I've, I've talked about how I don't like doing the mesh technique, but that's not to turn anybody off of it. I've just given you my reasons why I don't do it. Um, and that's, uh, there you go, see, crisscrosses and some touch-up, no problem, no problem. Um, I'll pull that out too so I get a better grip. And that's, uh, like I said, I mean, it's the nature of the beast, right? You're going to have to do touch-ups. And uh, as long as you're accepting of that fact, like when the first time I tried to um, do Python Patrol, I was under the impression uh, that... If I followed all these techniques and steps and stuff I figured out, that there would be zero problems doing this. Uh, and that was foolish. You know, it's just, it's no different than anybody making anything else. They're, they're going to make mistakes. It's just, can you correct those mistakes? Um, and the answer is, yes, you can. And we're just going to peel this off together. This is uh, looking good so far. Of course, having said that, what's going to happen because I'm doing this for YouTube is that there's going to be some god-awful mistake. It's going to take me, 
you know, three weeks to correct or something like that. But such is life. Yeah, and don't feel you have to stay in one spot either, removing your tape. It might be a matter of starting one place, getting as far as you can go, and then uh, stopping and switching to somewhere else. Because sometimes, uh, because the tape is interconnected in its crisscross pattern, removing one piece of tape might actually, in one spot, help you reattack that space in another spot. So you see how it's, I mean, who cares? It's coming off, it's coming off, right? It's coming off, we're seeing a pattern. I like it. I find that the silver paint I used was a little on the runny side. Uh, the amount of touch-ups there does not bother me. So maybe I would have used that uh, Hobbycraft enamel quick dry stuff because it came out quite nicely, but I did like the color of this. Um, and that's a, a good time to remind you uh, if you're using paints like um, gloss paints, that they go on thicker and they stay wetter longer. So you'll have to be careful with that. And you tend to get more of a mess with gloss paints. Um, and that's just the nature of the beast. And if you're painting over gloss paints, you absolutely want to flat coat them. Uh, the reason being is that, the reason why it's gloss is because it's smooth. There's no, there's really no pores in it to speak of. So if you want to um, defeat that, you've got to flat coat it. Um, if you wanted to keep your uh, vehicle gloss, you can always gloss coat it afterwards. Um, and then, uh, yeah, this is so satisfying. This is like picking at a scab. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you, shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> um, my hands are gonna block the view here, but all I'm doing is finding edges of this tape and peeling it where it's gonna come off. And I'm barely using any force at all. You shouldn't need to use any force. And if I encounter uh, what feels like too much resistance, uh, just let your spidey sense guide you in that case, then just stop and go to another section. And uh, yeah, this is, this is the part that's kind of weird because you're like, you're revealing parts of the pattern and it's like, oh my God, you know, you pull off one strip and all you see is a straight line of uh, burgundy, for example. But then when you get the other tape off, then it's like, oh wait, there's the, there's the pattern. So it's just a, a nuance of uh, doing this. And if you're over paint, I'm scraping very lightly here. Oh yeah, a little bit of mess in there. That black went on a little runny and that's my fault. Um, but nothing that can't be corrected. And we're just gonna peel all this off. So if you find this somehow therapeutic or relaxing, keep watching, but by all means, you can uh, skip forward to the next section. I'm just going to uh, keep peeling. And I'm really curious as to how my transition between the black and the silver went. There you go, come on. There we go. If you're doing fine lines with hard masks, um, sometimes it's, it, I mean, it's technically best practice to uh, pull towards the color you're masking off. So because I had um, burgundy down first and I put the silver on, I'd peel the paint towards the silver, but good luck doing that with this many bajillion little squares and diamonds all over it. There we go. Here we go. You remember we had that few little hiccups there where the pattern kind of crinkled in on itself or rotated in on itself, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I'm going to definitely show you um, how we fix that by, uh, through brush painting. Um, see, and it looks weird. Doesn't it look weird seeing the silver and the yellow there with the maroon? It's like, what the hell's going on? Once all the paint's off, it'll make sense. Well, there's a good chunk coming off. There we go. It's like a dog scratching behind its ear. Just keep going, it feels good. And then just put all your used tape in a pile, stick it to itself, whatever. Oh, well, there we go. It came off nice. Yeah, and this, uh, this is what we're doing here. Um, at this point, if your tape lifts off some of the burgundy color, this is probably the best time to realize that you're gonna have to do some touch-ups with uh, a brush. Would you necessarily want to reestablish the pattern in tape and then use spray again? I'll say maybe, 
uh, but it's a week maybe, because at this point, you're gonna have to focus on, uh, it's almost a bit drastic, right? Spray cans are, are very, a very drastic method for putting paint on a, on a Joe vehicle or any vehicle for that matter. Because um, we're using them outside their intended scale. And uh, there we go. The uh, brushwork also has a technique to it. Um, we certainly just don't want to slap paint on there. We want to uh, apply paint in a manner that makes it disappear. And usually that's by avoiding brush strokes. And with that, um, I, like I said, I, I've used, uh, <clears throat> like, I, like I've said in previous videos, I like to use acrylic. Um, you may choose enamel. The difference is if you use enamel paints, you'll need paint thinner, whereas acrylic, you can either use the company's thinner, um, rubbing alcohol or water, depending on. Uh, and if you go to a hobby store to buy your first bit of hobby paint, uh, then by all means, ask the people who work in the store. They'll be able to lead you in the right direction as to what thinner to use for what paint. Um, if you don't have a hobby store in your area, let's say you live in a really small town or something like that, then the trick is to hit up YouTube um, and just start exploring like how to paint with, you know, models and uh, with acrylic paint or enamel paint or whatever. Um, and just go from there. So a little bit of good honest research on the internet will bring you to where you want to go. It's actually turned out quite nicely. Quite nicely. I can't, uh, I can't say it enough. We know there's touch-ups that are going to have to be done here. Um, and that shouldn't dissuade you. So when you see paint run underneath, don't go, oh man, that's it, man, this project sucks, it's done. No, it's not. It's just part of the process and you gotta respect the process. All right, we've worked hard to get to this point and we've still got some work left behind us before we, uh, we can call this finished. Oh, there's a nice strip, that was satisfying. It's like, uh, you know what it is? It's like bubble wrap. That's what it's like. You know, you pop bubble wrap all the time and you're just like, oh. this is the same thing. Uh, and you're revealing this really cool paint pattern one bit at a time. Like that. Yeah, see, there's some bleed under in there. That's fine, we'll fix that up with some burgundy paint. Paint's a little raised, which means it, it did layer up a little bit. Um, and that, that can happen. I'm not worried whatsoever. There you go, even on this back tab here, the pattern's a little janky, but it's, uh, on casual glance, it's no different than looking at the X30. No different. There's a little piece. Come on, pattern, reveal yourself to me. Yeah, and see, this piece of tape here was like that, so there's a perfect silver diamond there, but I remove that, and now it's got the, <laughs> the cut in there. I'm gonna fix that with a brush in two seconds, not even two seconds. There we go. Oh, this is looking cool. And you can do the same thing with an airbrush as well. Um, yeah, it's the same, same technique, same masking tape, everything else. There is a Python patrol scheme or a set of schemes you can do without masks. And if I've just enticed your uh, curiosity, um, we will be talking about that either at the end of this series or in its own series. Uh, and that's where we get into some, some branching out. Because when you do the, I mean, you could do Python Patrol all the time um, and just, you know, do this method, lather, rinse, repeat. And, uh, you know, stick with the, the classic colors. Um, but there are, I mean, aside from whatever you come up with in your imagination, which is always fantastic. Um, oh, that was a good one. Um, whatever you come up with in your imagination, there are uh, some other things that you can do. 
and I've branched out my Python Patrol painting. Um, and I actually prefer doing it that way. Um, I still like the classic colors. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The classic colors are, are awesome. But I really enjoy this other method. Um, and the, the Coles Notes version is that I take the action figure colors and I put them on vehicles. And Toys R Us did the kind of exact opposite. I didn't even realize this until after I had started. But they did this in 2002 or something where they... Um... See? Look at that. Look at that. Pretty sweet, huh? Um, they had taken the, these colors and started applying them to figures. The, the yellow of the scheme was uh, switched with gold, which I wasn't such a huge fan of. But as I was doing the exact opposite. I was taking the figure colors and putting them on the vehicles, the, the classic figure colors. So uh, I have a Skyhawk that's themed after the Televiper. I have uh, a Skyhawk that's themed after the Cobra Officer, Crimson Guard. Uh, and, and it's fun because you basically, that's where color balance comes in, is you look at the figure itself and say, okay, this has got yellow on it. How much yellow? Is it 50% yellow? Is it whatever? It doesn't have to be exact. Because um, sometimes what you paint matters how much you paint it. So let's say, for example, you know, 50% of my Skyhawk is not yellow. Um, but the canopy is, and the canopy is very visible. So it gives you that same weight of color. Maybe not the same volume, but the same weight. It really stands out. We're almost there. And once you're done peeling all your paint off, or tape off, <laughs> um, have a look, because you might have used a small piece of tape somewhere to do something. Um, so if you notice any glaring deficiencies in your pattern or the pattern stops, it might just be because you still have tape there. Uh, that's happened to me on a couple of occasions. Where it's like, oh, I totally missed that. How's that even possible? And then I looked at it and it was just a piece of tape. Oh, this is fantastic. Fantastic. Now you may, if you're peeling along with me here, you may notice that uh, you can feel some raised edges along your paint. Uh, and again, that's uh, sometimes even despite your best efforts, that's what's gonna happen. The way around that is, uh, I haven't seen it in a hardware store per se, uh, but I could be wrong. But in the hobby world, they have polishing cloths or sanding cloths, if you will, and they barely have any grit on them whatsoever. And if you just run that over your uh, scheme, it won't remove the paint if you do it lightly enough. And then you can wash off the dust and that will get rid of that raised edge around there. Um, that's the best solution I have so far. Somebody may chime in and say they have something better, but uh, that's what I got. We are almost there. So ladies and gentlemen, there is your Python pattern. Now, if you find that my diamonds are too big, maybe you want smaller diamonds, then that's just a matter of moving the tape to closer together. Uh, keeping in mind that you may have to adjust the width of your tape you're using in order to maintain the balance of that pattern. Uh, but this is roughly in line with my, um, excuse me, my Python Wolf. You can see there, there's some bleed under and stuff, and we're going to fix all that with a brush. So all we're going to do is get our three colors together, the black, a silver, and a burgundy. And we are going to touch this up by hand. No problem. Uh, but there it is. So there's your Python pattern revealed. Um, if you're absolutely not happy with it, see if you can fix it with a brush. Uh, worst case, you may need to prime and start again. That doesn't mean that you've failed, okay? This isn't, uh, this isn't a pass-fail thing. This is an are you happy thing. Now, just to have some fun with it, because um, there is work yet to be done. We're back at the laundry sink with uh, our custom here. We've taken off all the tape. And what I want to show you is something I just figured out, um, which works like a charm. So when you take the tape off, you may have noticed that your black and silver uh, diamonds are raised slightly, right? Because the paints, it's another layer of paint on there. So what I've just done is I've turned this thing completely smooth. 
And what I did to do that was use one of these sponges. It's a scouring side here with a regular sponge there. I soaked it in water and I lightly back and forth scrubbed along the hull of the vehicle. And what that does is it works down the excess paint. And you'll see that it hasn't made any of the pattern disappear. All it's done is thinned it out and smoothed it out. I highly recommend you do this because it'll look better, it'll feel better, and when you go to put stickers on, that raised paint will create air bubbles under the, um, or air gaps under the stickers, and it won't look as good. So it's almost like sanding, sanding uh, down the paint, if you will, but with a light scouring sponge. Okay, I know scour is a bit of a hard word, but it's, uh, I don't know, I think you can get these at the dollar store or whatever, but definitely worthwhile. Um, and then when you're done, rinse off the whole thing. It's not going to affect the paint because it's, uh, it's all dried and then uh, dry it off or let it air dry. I would recommend drying it off depending on what your water is like um, with a paper towel. And then you'll be ready for the next phase, which is the paint touch up. So give that a whirl and I promise you it will be fantastic. We're going to mock this up just to see what it looks like because fun. So there's the skid or the treads. I always want to say skids. There's your gray and yellow skis. Missiles are yellow. There is your black canopy on there. And there is your windscreen. Oh, it's stuck in there. Bloody hinges. Either way, so we sit it on top and there it is. Um, we're not done yet. We are not done yet, right? We still have to touch up and everything's still gonna get clear coated. Not the canopies, but everything else is gonna get clear coated. Um, that'll match up sheens. And of course I have to add in these little parts uh, for the final assembly. So just to show you what that looks like. Um, here you go. So there's that first bit there. And that's what it's gonna look like. Right there, let's move the camera back a bit here. I mean, look at that. If you're not proud of what you've made so far, well, I don't know what to tell you. So now what we're gonna do next is uh, we are gonna do, uh, we'll call it there because this has been a long video. And the next video will be on touch-ups, clear coating, and if it runs short enough, then we'll do the stickers then as well. But there you have the next step complete in your Pythonization process. So thanks for watching. Click like and describe if you like. Or describe, did I say describe? Who knows? Subscribe, we're on coffee number 35. <laughs> uh, and we will see you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching and remember, have fun.